So this is lesson 4-4, which is adding and subtracting rational expressions. Our essential question is, how do you rewrite rational expressions to find sums and differences? Okay, so this first one is adding rational expressions with like denominators. So we're finding the sum. So if we have the same denominator, we know our answer will have that same denominator. And we just add the numerators. So this one will be x plus 5 over x plus 4. This one, so we notice that x squared plus 3x is the same as an x factored out. So these are the same denominator. So that means our denominator would be x squared plus 3x. And then if we add the 2x and the 3x, we get 5x. And 1 plus negative 8 would be negative 7. So that's how we do it if we have the same denominators. Okay. The next step is how do we identify the least common multiple of polynomials? So it's kind of like just back when you learned how to add fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So in order to find the common denominator, we want to find the least common multiple. So if we look here, x plus 2 squared would just be x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then if we factor this, we would get x plus 2 times x plus 3. So for this one, our least common multiple, we have to represent everything from both of them. But if they have overlaps, we can count that. So this one needs 2x plus 2s. So I would write x plus 2 times x plus 2. This one has an x plus 2, which we already have, so we don't have to write it again. And then we need an x plus 3. So that would be our least common multiple. Okay, so this one we have x cubed minus 9, which would be x times x squared minus 9, which is difference of squares. So it would be x times x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, this one we can factor out an x, so it would be x times x minus 2. Oops. Oh, nope, I didn't look at that whole thing. Okay, never mind on that. This is a trinomial. Okay, so this whole thing, we're saying what multiplies to negative 15 and adds to negative 2. So that would be x minus 5 and x plus 3. This one is x squared minus 5x, so we can take out an x and we have x minus 5. Okay, so the least common multiple. So if I start here, I need an x, so I write an x. I need an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. So I have x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, then I come over here. I already have the x plus 3, so I don't need to write it again. I need an x minus 5. And then if I come to the last one, I already have an x in my least common multiple, and I already have an x minus 5, so I don't need to write and down any additional factors. Okay, so now how do we use this to add rational expressions? So if we have x plus 3 over, I'm going to factor this, this would be x plus 1, x minus 1, plus 2 over, and if we factor that, it would be x minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, so if we look at this, we need to find the least common multiple. So that's going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. So we know our answer is going to have those three things, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. Okay, so now let's use a different color. So we need to multiply each fraction, top and bottom, by any part of the common denominator that it's missing. So the first fraction is missing x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply that. Second fraction is missing x plus 1. So now I write what I have. So here I'm going to foil this out here. So this would be x squared plus 3x minus 2x would be plus x minus 6. And then we're adding, I'm going to distribute this, plus 2x plus 2. So if we simplify that, that would be x squared plus 3x minus 4 over 
x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. Then we try to factor it if we can, so we can think what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to 3. That would be negative 1 and 4. So x minus 1, x plus 4 over x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. We can cancel the x minus 1s. So that means our answer would be x plus 4 over x plus 1 times x minus 2. And again, we always say x cannot be, so it can't be negative 1, 2, or the one we crossed off, which is positive 1. Okay, now we're going to try subtracting with um, unlike denominators. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to factor this. So we're going to write x minus 8, x plus 2. This one would be x plus 2, x plus 4. So our common denominator is going to be x minus 8 times x plus 2 times x plus 4. So we need to multiply each part by what it's missing. This one's missing the x plus 4, top and bottom. This one's missing the x minus 8, top and bottom. Okay, so the key thing with subtraction though, so we could change the and into subtraction, we need to subtract this whole, the whole foiled out x plus 1 times x minus 8. So over here, so I'm going to put this in parentheses. So this would be x squared. This is this one right here. x squared plus 4x plus 1x would be plus 5x plus 4 minus, and then we're going to foil out this. So it would be x squared minus 8 plus 1. So it would be minus 7x minus 8. Okay, then we're going to simplify this. So x squared minus x squared, those would cancel. We'd have 5x minus negative 7, so that'd be 12x. And 4 minus a negative 8 would be plus 12. Okay, so now we always factor if we can. So we know that this would be 12 times x plus 1. So if we have 12 times x plus 1 over x minus 8, x plus 2, and x plus 4. And this is a good example of even though we factored that numerator, nothing canceled. But it's still always good to practice factoring it in case you have something that is common in the numerator and denominator that you can cancel. Okay, so x cannot be 8, negative 2, negative 4. And that's it. Okay. So the last one is called compound fractions. So a compound fraction is in the form of a fraction that has one or more fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So it's basically a fraction with fractions within it. Okay. So what I want to do first is I want to get the numerator into one single fraction. So I need to get common denominators between the x and the x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by x plus 1. It's hard to write tiny here. Okay, and I'm going to multiply this one by x. So now I have x plus 1 plus 2x over x times x plus 1 over 1 over x, over 1 over y, sorry. So that would be 3x plus 1 over x times x plus 1 over 1 over y. So now, knowing what we know, so we have a fraction divided by a fraction. So we know how to divide fractions. We keep it, change it, flip it, so or multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to keep the top. We're going to change this to multiplication, and we're going to flip the 1 over y. So this would be 3x plus 1 over x times x plus 1 times y over 1. So that means our final answer would be y times 3x plus 1 
over x times x plus 1. Okay, let me know if there are any questions.